I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. The Word of God will work in my life. The Word, the word of God, God will work in my life. That I must study and work the Word. But I must study and work the Word. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come in the name of thy most holy and precious Son, Jesus. Yes. Lord God, I don't come based on any goodness or merit of my own. I don't even come, Lord, with thinking that I have a message that you speak. But I come, Lord, purely as your vessel. Yes. yes. To speak what you would have me to speak yes. and to do what you would have me to do. So in faith, Lord God, I sit down and I thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing what I rely on you to do. Amen. And that is to minister to the waiting congregation. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray. My soul says amen. 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 Turn back to the scriptures that we read earlier, Mark the seventh chapter. We're going to just be reading verses 17 through 22. Mark the seventh chapter, and we're just going to read. Thank you. 
he didn't. You know how did he know that? Yes. Because he referred to Jesus as good teacher, good master. So the first thing that this young man had to realize that praising, uh, praising Jesus and complimenting Jesus was not going to be enough to get him into heaven. Amen. Amen. I want you to understand that you can walk around and praise God and say how good God is and he's good all the time and all this other kind of stuff. But praising God or praising Jesus in itself, by itself, is not enough Amen. to get you to heaven. Amen. How do I know that? Because look at Jesus' response. He says, good teacher, good master, what must I? And Jesus stopped, well, wait a minute. Why are you calling me good? Why are you calling me good? That used to drive me straight up the wall when I read that. Has that ever bothered you? Has that ever, why, you ever, why would Jesus say to him, why are you calling me good? There's none good but God. Amen. And for a long time, I didn't understand that until God gave me revelation, wisdom, and knowledge that, that Jesus was saying to the young man, you're calling me teacher. You're calling me master. You're calling me a good miracle worker, a good prophet, or whatever. But you cannot have eternal life until you realize that I am God. Amen. 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 That's what he's saying now. Amen. Why are you calling me good? Do you, are you calling me good because you know who I am? Is that why you're calling me good? Are you calling me good only on a side of a respect because you see me as this good teacher, this, this good man? He's letting him know. And he's letting you know and anybody else that's willing to learn it that Jesus was not just a good teacher. He was not just a good man. He was not just a miracle worker. He was not just a prophet. He was, was and is God in the flesh. And until you realize that he is not just one way to God, but that he is the way to God, you can never receive eternal life. So the young man says, good master, what must I do? Hmm. What must I do? Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. What must I do to inherit? He had already inherited all these riches and wealth. Amen. So he was used to inheriting things. Amen. So what must I do to inherit eternal life? What did Jesus say to him? Jesus says, no, you didn't. Jesus says, you know what the commandments say. You know what the commandments say. Why are you asking me what you must do to, you, to receive eternal life? You're a Jewish. You know the Jewish law. You know the law of Moses. You know the, Why are you asking me this? What must a person do to inter, inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you know the commandments. It says, the commandments said... Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He says to him, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness or defraud someone, and honor your mother and your father. It always blows my mind. It always blows my mind. What is Jesus saying to him? Why is Jesus, he's quoting five of the Ten Commandments. He's quoting five of the Ten. Is Jesus saying that a person can only be saved by following the commandments? And if Jesus is saying this, doesn't this nullify everything that he teaches us in the New Testament about uh, by grace you are saved, not of works? But the man said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, you know the commandments. Why would he 
answer him like that? Why would he answer him? You know the command. And he listed five of them. Well, the first thing I want you to see that Jesus is teaching this man is you think that you can be saved by what you do. Amen. He's showing him that salvation is not of works. This guy thought he could do something to inherit eternal life. So Jesus said, okay, if you think you could do something, then I'm going to give you the law. That's what the law says. Obey this, obey that. But now i got to take you beyond the law. Amen. Now, I want you to notice, I know it's not Bible study, but I want you to notice what five commandments Jesus gave. No, it's not five because the fraud and false witness go together. What five commandments is Jesus quoting here? Okay? Uh, you look, up, look it up in Exodus. You'll see it. Okay. Okay, thank you. But at any rate, Thank you, Jesus. What 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 arena are these five? I'm just going to make it a study. What arena? These five. These five commandments. Sins against how man. Would you, how would you classify them? Sins against man. Amen. Sins against humankind or relationship commandments. Each one of them have to do with relationships. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Each one of them has to do with relationships. This young man stands up and he tells Jesus, he says, well, that's no big deal. I've kept all of these commandments since I was a child. How many of you can say that? I've obeyed every single solitary one of these commandments since I was a child. I think that child was what they say, puffin. I think that's what they say. Is that what they say? When they're faking something, what is it? Bluffing. Not bluffing, but it's another word that y'all say. I don't know what it is, but anyway. I think he was inflating the truth. <laughs> I'll put it that way. He was inflating the truth, okay? So he says to Jesus, I've kept all of these since I was a child. What is the next thing this scripture says? This scripture says that Jesus, beholding him or look, looking on him, loved him. The man says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, you know the commandments. He says, I've obeyed all of them since I was a child. And scripture says that Jesus, looking at him, he loved him. I want you to imagine in your spirit, Jesus standing there with his penetrating eyes. And he looking at this young man. And when he's looking at him, he's not seeing him on the outside, but he's seeing him deep in the inside. Jesus knows exactly what is going on inside of this young man, and Jesus is getting ready to reveal him to him. Scripture said Jesus, looking at him, loved him. I'm going to say something that's going to sound mind-boggling or whatever. But I want you to know the fact that Jesus loves you is not enough for you to receive eternal life. Amen. Amen. The fact that Jesus loves you is not enough for you to receive eternal life. Not in itself alone. Scripture says God so loved the world. Yes. But not everybody in the world is going to have eternal life. Amen. Jesus loved him. He looked at him. He saw inside of him. He saw what he needed. He, he saw his hopes and his dreams and so forth. So Jesus says to him, okay, you say that you've kept these commandments since you were a child. And remember, all five of the commandments had to do with relationships. How you treat other people. So Jesus says to him, 
Take what you have. Sell it. Give it to the poor. And you shall receive treasure in heaven. Does it surprise you that in Jesus' answer, he starts talking about finances? What must I do to receive eternal life? What in the world does finances have to do with it? What does that have to do with my salvation? Why is he saying to me, sell everything you have and give the money to the poor? You say you've kept the commandments? Well, the commandments said, when Jesus said, uh, the disciples asked Jesus, what is the first and the greatest commandment? He said, they love the Lord thy God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So if you're obeying all of the commandments, then what you need to do is take the money that you're keeping for yourself, and you're just using for yourself, and you're hoarding away, and sell what you got, and give it to the poor. Say, put your money where your mouth is. You love your neighbor as yourself? You see people suffering? And you do nothing? All five of the commandments that he listed had to do with relationship. He says, if you're going to follow the commandments, then you got to follow the first and the greatest, or the second and the greatest of all. Love your neighbor as yourself. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, if you want eternal life, you got to be willing to give it all away. Amen. Amen. Man had great wealth. Scripture says he went away broken hearted because he had great wealth. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that I believe if that man had been willing to give it away, God would have told him to keep it. God was showing him what was God in his life. Amen. Amen. This is what God, this is what the whole thing is about. That's why the five commandments, are, yeah, five commandments about relationships and all this other kind of stuff, God was showing this man what it was that sat on the throne of his heart, and he says, what it is, is not me. Amen. 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 What it is, is not me. I'm not the Lord of your life, your finances, your money, what you got, your home, your house, your car, your children, your, your recreation, everything is more important than me. If I'm God, if you love me most, take what you got, sell it, and give it to the poor. Amen. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Hard. Hard? Yeah. How do you feel about that? so that he could help people in need when they were in need. Amen. God allows you to have money so that you can help people that are in need when they're in need. Amen. God doesn't want you. You know, you say it's hard and all that kind of stuff. It is not hard. It is not hard. Because the more you give, the more God gives back to you. Hey, Either man. you believe man, that or you does. don't hey, believe it. You man. know, it, it just doesn't make sense to me why people think giving to God and giving when God tells you to give is so difficult. Well, why is it so difficult? Because the money is on the throne of your heart and not Amen. God. Amen. It's your finances, your position that makes you think that you are somebody. Amen. I'm this because I got this and I'm that because I got that. God says no. Amen. And I want you to notice something. I'm getting ready to close. Okay? I want you to notice something. Jesus said to him, 
Give away, sell what you have. Take the money and give it to the poor. Okay? What is God saying to us? God is saying that when we give our life to him, we must be willing to give all. We must be willing to give all. It's all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. God says when you give your life to him, there's no half giving. There's no quarter giving. God says, I want all of you. Because if I don't have all of you, then I don't have any of you. Do you understand? And he tells him, he says, take up your cross. Now, if you notice in the King James Version, it says, take up your cross and follow me. But the NIV version, they leave those words out. That's why when you study the Bible, you need to use more than one translation. Because he did say, he says, give away what you have and you'll have treasure stored up in heaven. You say, honey, I'm worried about the treasure dying on earth. You talk about stores and treasures for me in heaven. He said, you'll have treasure stored in heaven. Take up, your, take up the cross and follow me. If you notice in the King James Version, it doesn't say take up your cross. It says take up the cross. So what you got to understand, you say, well, how, why is he talking about the cross? He has not yet even died. Why is he talking about the cross? Because he's trying to show this young man that following him is going to involve death. Amen. Following him is going to involve a cross. The cross at Calvary and the cross that you will have to carry as you give your all to Christ. Giving your life to Christ involves death. Have you died yet? Have you died yet? Have you died yet? Amen. If you haven't died yet, there's something wrong. Amen. Because Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Amen. That means I'm dead. I'm dying. You got to die to self. But the life that I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself up. The young man went away. His divine appointment. His divine appointment. It was a test. It was a test. And he failed the test big time. I know. I believe. Because Jesus doesn't tell me anybody else that has wealth to give away all their money. that to anybody else. But he knew that young man's heart. Money held too high of a place on the ground. He says, take up your cross and follow me. Amen. If he would have been willing to give it up, God would have told him to keep it. Amen. Amen. It's like when you give up your life, God gives it back to you. Yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. Back back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, better God. than it was. Yes, yes, yes. You gave it to him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Most holy and all wise Father, I thank you for the people that are here this morning. Yes, Lord. Again, it is a divine appointment. Yes, it is. Thank you. A divine appointment for all of us to see that God knows how we are with our finances. And he knows that sometimes our finances are more important to us than he is. And he's trying to show us that we have to be free. Free from being held in bondage by things. This young man loved the things of the world more than he loved God. Yeah. This young man went away empty 
because he loved the things of the world more than he did the hope of salvation. This man went away empty because he loved the things of the world more than he did Jesus. Lord, I ask you to touch the hearts of the people here, the ones that have made profession of faith and the ones who have not yet been saved and help them to receive the giving, I help them to understand that giving their life to Christ does mean giving it all away. And you're talking about calling yourself. Help us, Lord. Help them, thank you. In the name of Jesus, my soul says, Amen. Amen. Would you stand for